The HVAC design that I'm working on right now is a pretty good example of why 3D modeling is so cool and how it can be so helpful. So this is the footprint of uh, one of the levels inside of this house. There are three levels. This is not why we built 3D models. You can see that you could just, anybody could take this footprint of 37, 34.25 square feet and multiply it by, what is this? Uh, 10 and a half feet, okay? That's easy, that's calculator stuff. That's not why we do this. Uh, there's floor one, which is 10 feet. There is floor two, which is nine feet. That, again, not so important. This over here is why we do this. So I do this on every one of the homes that I work on analyzing either for an energy model or for HVAC design. And I want to show you kind of like what is going on here. So first of all, there's this, which is the side attics on floor two. There's, as you can see, these basically would fit right over this thing here. So if we slide this over, boom. This is what the full second floor actually looks like. This is going to be conditioned attics, like encapsulated attics with spray foam and, or whatever you're going to do. Um, spray foam has its issues. I always like to just bring that up. It is a good tool when it's used appropriately. Uh, but the space, you want to be able to condition. So this is why the 3D model is important. Now, right now, the entity info down here, which is what I just used to show you like what the square footage on this particular face of the roof is, is 90 square feet. Uh, if I did not build this in, then it would take the square footage, which is underneath this. You can see like here, I can click on the actual floor area of the attic. And it would do what we just talked about, which is take 603.62 square feet multiplied by a ceiling height, an average ceiling height, let's say, which is what we always do in the attic first, because you want to get the volume right, because we want the blower door to make sense for the air tightness uh, assumptions that the software is going to make, whether again, you're doing energy modeling or HVAC load calculations. But the volume is not all we need to do. We also need to get the square footage. And as you can see here, I'm not even getting the volume right. Like the entity info is not showing a volume. You can see when I click on the middle of the floor, the one with the flat ceiling, I'm getting 12,453.75 square feet or cubic feet, excuse me. That's the volume. That's nice. I need that for this in order to get that average square footage. And the here is how you do that. So I'm going to take this top attic as an example here. Um, you can see how many planes are on this thing. This is one of the most complicated attics I've ever built. So what you do is you build the attic, and then you're going to remove the floor of the attic entirely so that I can get underneath it and look like a mechanic up at the underside of this thing and see if there's any weird duplicates or make sure that everything's lining up, right? So I did that already. I'm not going to bore you with doing all the stupid stuff that I just did. Then when I put it back, I can use what's called Solid Inspector, which is right up here. I'm sorry, it's right up here. It is a plug-in on this, um, on Trimble SketchUp. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here for a second. Okay, great. So this one happens to already be fixed because I already fixed it, but you would click on the SketchUp uh, Solid Inspector extension and it would say, oh, there's six reversed faces in here and I can go ahead and fix that. They all become the same color. No errors, everything is shiny. I love this plugin. This is free, by the way. Um, so it's just a way to make sure that you've fixed any solids that you want to be one thing that has an interior volume. That's how you do it. So now my top attic has 5,823 cubic feet of volume. I'm gonna do the same thing to these over here. So when I turn this over, I'm going to delete the bottom and you can see already that like, there's some, there's some weird stuff going on under there. Uh, what's this thing right here? I don't know, I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, there looks like there might be missing this right there and this right here and then this right here. So all of this kind of stuff is what you do when you're trying to make sure that you're as accurate as possible. <clears throat> does everyone need this? No, everyone does not need this. But when you're dealing with trying to target the difference between a one ton system for a certain area of the house or for a whole house or a 
uh, one and a half ton system, which is 50% bigger, then we have a little bit of a problem. And the issue is that we want this thing to look exactly like the uh, attic that we've modeled it for, which I'm going to show you right now. So if I match this up down here, boom. <clears throat> now we can see that this big honking thing looks exactly like the attic that I've tried to model here. Uh, so this is the plan, the roof plan, and this is what the 3D model ends up looking like. And then I know for a fact that all of the BTUs that I'm accounting for in my model are based in a, a form of reality that actually has math that goes into it and not just some assumptions are being like, oh, well, I don't, I mean, I don't even know how you would try to do the thing on the right on a piece of paper. So um, the roofers, when I brought this up with this client, he said, the roofers have already yelled at me about this. And I was like, good, because that is pretty intense. Uh, so just a reminder to everyone that a more simple shape is easier to build. So take that and do with it what you will. Uh, please do comment below if you have other things to add about 3D modeling or how you use it uh, in your work. Whether or not you do home performance work, I think 3D modeling is pretty cool. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Tune in next time.